welcome everybody. We're going to talk about automation. And I have my great friend Marie here with me. So here is the box that the automation comes in. And notice it's a nice size box because it has all the components to get you started. Except it does not come with a tablet. We have found that they're outdated almost the minute you purchase it. And because of that, we allow you to download the automation or the software onto three different devices. So let's jump in and you notice right out of the box, what's right on top is? The instructions. Yep, the instructions. In the instructions we have all of our frames that we have made. That's why it might be a little thicker is because it has every frame in here. And it's easy to find the page that your frame is on and your machine. We're installing the automation onto a 21 Pro and we're using our new Continuum 2 frame. Look and see what machine you have and what frame you have. And if you don't know what frame you have, a good resource is your instructions. Another way to find out is send us a picture. Besides the instructions, what else is next on the next layer? So the next layer, you have your tablet bracket. You have your software, which is in this box right here. And your hardware and items, your cords and your boards. And then underneath, you have your motor plate. Don't pull it out like I am until you're ready to install it. But this is your motor plate. And this is what plugs in and this is what drives the automation side to side, front to back. Then you have your power. And this is the bracket for the machine. And then here you have all the hardware and brackets that you'll need. Make sure you go through your parts list, find the parts that you need. We're just gonna set our box off to the side and start uh, installing. Okay, so what we did to set up the frame and the machine and everything was we took out our takeoff bolt and I locked my carriage in place with the channel locks. We're going to <coughs> unplug our machine and we're going to make sure that all the plugs are unplugged and that includes our encoders. So we're just going to take our encoders out of our machine and now we're going to tip our machine off to the side as careful as possible because this machine here is a heavy bugger and I don't want to ruin the encoders. So I just want to be really careful. And so now it's just laying off to its side and there's no stress or strain on my encoder so it's not going to bend incorrectly. Now I have access to my carriage and we can start installing what we call the motor plate. And the motor plate, you'll notice that you have this nifty cord here <laughs> That tells you that this is the back of the motor plate. All right, and so I'm just gonna lift it up right here and set it on. I wanna make sure that this little plug right here, as I'm putting it on, goes down underneath. And I can set it on. Okay, so now I want to align my motor plate with the holes that are on the carriage. So if I tip it up, you'll see some holes on the carriage side. They're on each side so that you can screw this down and you wanna screw it down, very important, nice and tight. Cause it's gonna be moving. Yes. And we want it stable. The first thing that we're gonna do is install our power strip and it's really easy to install. You're just going to mount it from the back of your carriage. You're just gonna take the screws, my M6 by 10s and you're going to need a hex nut as well. And so I'm gonna use my Allen wrench to put into my socket head screw, and then I'm going to use my open wrench and just finish tightening these on. Because things are gonna be moving, we don't want it to go anywhere. So I'm just gonna finish tightening it. There we go, it's on nice and tight, and now, what makes this nice is you can plug this into your power strip and you can plug your machine, your automation and everything else into it. But we're not gonna plug our automation in yet because we haven't screwed it down 
And oh. we'll, that's one of the last things that we want to do. So I put the motor plate on and now I'm ready to screw it down. And so I'm going to take my screws and it's calling for M6 by 20 inch screws and some more hex nuts. Being able to kind of screw some of these on first and finger tighten is really is a good way to go. And does it matter which side? Well, this side has a control box, so you can't screw it oh, in okay. over here. And that's why. So the control box is the box that you're plugging all your cords into. So let's start with the middle first. And then we'll just go underneath and screw it on. And then we'll screw all of these on this side. And then we will tighten them up. That one and that one. And then these two right here. Yeah. And you're not doing this middle one. Yeah, you only have five. All right, I'll let you do those sides. Anything else while we're putting the motor plate on that we need to be aware of, Marie? Um, just make sure you get it on straight because there is room to get it uh, a little wobby. Oh, okay. And you want it as straight as possible. You want your belts running as straight as possible because it can really affect your design as you're quilting. So all these little adjustments are really important. Um, and through, uh, over time, as things loosen, as they will, um, should you just watch and look to readjust or? Yeah, you should go back through and check your screws. Okay. And make sure they're not getting loose. Okay, so now we have everything finger tightened. I'm just going to quickly just tip it up like that on the side so that you can see. And I'm going to tighten everything up. And if you just hold it in place with your Allen wrench, then you can just tighten it up and it works a little faster. And this was that control box that she was talking about. And you'll notice that that's why we can't screw it down. So that you'll have five screws to screw down. And I'm just going to hold this in place and then just take my Allen wrench and just tighten it up. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. And this one, last but not least. There we go. There we go. Now that's all tight. And I've got to make sure that I don't ruin that encoder. So watch your encoders, really important because you don't want them bent the wrong direction. So be careful with them. All right, so now the motor plate is on. Nice and sturdy. Yeah. Next, we have our bracket that goes onto the sewing machine. You are going to look at the bracket and find these little markings right here, the A and B. You're going to open to the picture of the bracket right here. It has the B on the top and the A on the bottom. And you're going to set it down just like it is in the pictures. I need several more screws. And I'm going to need my tensioners. These are called the belt tensioners. And we're going to need one set of those for this bracket. In my instructions, it's saying that I should be installing this little bracket here to hold the belt into place. The other part's the tensioner. So we're just going to follow the instructions and install it. On this, I'm just going to turn it so these little teeth will be facing the top. So what we're going to do is just attach the tensioners, but we're not going to tighten them all the way up, okay? Because we have to thread the belt through it. So now I'm going to take this end here, and notice how this is facing down. So I'm going to flip this around and attach the other side, okay? And this one also has these little teeth that we're going to mount over the edge of the bracket as you're attaching it. You do want to take the knobs off. Okay, so we do so want to take the knobs off. So you can screw it in. Because it's harder to screw it in with the knob on. And now you can attach it much easier. So you're just going to screw it on. And this one you can screw all the way on because this is a tensioner knob. And so we're going to thread the belt and tighten it up in. So this side you can screw all the way down. So we're going to put the knob back on. And hold your finger inside the hole to hold the screw so and then screw it with that one. Good tips. 
So I'm holding the screw with my finger and pushing on on the inside right here. And I'm screwing the knob in on with this hand. You don't need to tighten it yet. Just and we just want to leave it a little loose. Okay, we've got our bracket and we're going to put it underneath so that this is towards the front of the machine and this is towards the back. We want to mount it to the side that doesn't have the encoder. So to find your encoder wheel and then find the holes that are furthest away from it. And then you're going to align this bracket here with these holes. And you'll want to not tighten it up too much because you want to make sure it's nice and straight. Now what we want to do is to put our brackets on the end of our frame. And it doesn't really matter um, which side you put which bracket. No, it However, not. I like to put your tensioner knob on that side and your other bracket in to hold the belt on the other side because this is the side that you're going to constantly be going and making adjustments as you roll your quilt. So it just makes a lot of sense to put your knob on that side. So what we're going to do is go to our denim for the continuum. Denims are just an insert with instructions for each new frame and the new items that we are producing. And so we're just going to follow the instructions and thread our belts. This is a really important step, so I want you to unroll your belts and look at the ends. Find the end that's the straightest of the two, and that's the one that will thread through. So I'm going to hand this end to Marie, and she's going to, you know, set that to the side. Now, as we are um, threading it, we want the long belt with the teeth facing down towards the table. So we're going to um, tip our motor plate up and we're going to be really careful that we don't um, catch our encoder. So make sure that as you thread it up. And so I'm going to thread it between this top wheel that moves and that joint. And we're just going to pull it through until you see it on this side. Okay? On this side here, we have a little wheel and it has teeth on it. And you also see a little plastic piece right here. And we want to make sure that we don't go under this plastic piece, that we want to go on top of that plastic piece and around the wheel and back through. So it should look just like that. We have threaded our first belt. Wasn't that easy? Okay, now we're ready to turn our carriage or Put it back down and make sure that you're really careful with that encoder wheel. And we can pull our belt out this direction and kind of start pulling it through so we can attach it. Okay, Marie, should we thread the top belt as well or should we attach this belt to the sides? Um, it doesn't matter which way, but we can attach the sides first and then we can okay. thread the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach the sides and the brackets. And so Marie's going to get her brackets and show you how to attach those. And I just want to make sure that the belt is not twisted before I put it in the tensioner on this side. And show them how it goes on and how it grabs the belt. Yeah, there's two parts to it. I'm going to put the belt where the teeth fit in this part and then the top to, to keep the tension on that belt. Some of the frames will have a bracket that will hold these specific pieces. If you do have those brackets, like on the older continuum frames, thread the belt first so you can see the position of the belt through the motor in relation to the motor plate. And then you can adjust the brackets and make sure that the brackets and the belt is running lengthwise, nice and straight across your frame. If it's off, it's going to sew your design off. So I have unscrewed my knobs on my tensioner and I'm going to screw it on really quick. And then I'm going to show you how to thread the belt through it and put the tensioner knobs back on. It's easier to screw these down 
without the knob in place. So that's why we have you take them off. Okay. Now I'm going to put my knob back on and Marie showed this little tip to me. So put your finger down in that hole right there to hold the screw in place and then turn this one so it, the flat side's facing the screw and then you're just gonna put this on this side and start screwing this one on and by putting your finger through there, it's gonna hold it in place. You don't wanna tighten it all the way down because we're gonna start threading our belt. You're just gonna use this little path right here to this little hole, and now you're gonna start threading your belt. We're gonna kinda of leave it a little loose before I tighten everything up because we wanna thread our belt that's gonna run through our sewing machine. Next. Okay, Marie, I'm gonna have you thread that one. So she's doing, what she's doing again is finding the, cur the knot curved in. I'm just going to go through the top here, feel it come underneath, let it just go right through to the gear. The belt is going to be in the up position when you're done installing. And then a little secret that Carla showed me is I'm going to tuck this belt <laughs> in here until we get the sewing machine on. Yeah, now we have it threaded through and see this little um, bracket right here that's in between? So the, the belt's just right over that bracket writing across the two little wheels with the teeth up. Okay, so now we can put the machine back on and I'm going to hold my encoder up when you're ready. and I'm going to try to make this look as easy as possible. And now I can take my encoder and we can gently place it on and make sure that we haven't damaged anything. So it's really important to have two people. So now we have our machine in place. We want to get our poles on. We'll do the front one first. Now this is going to come up underneath this right here. And there's the little hole. And you just start pulling it through. There we go. And you'll see it comes out this side. And once you're all nice and tight, then you can tighten it down. And then you can go and start tightening um, the other belt down too, as well. Okay, so that's on there. And see how that's going to hold that machine in place till we get everything tightened up. So now I'm just going to hurry and tighten the rest of my belt, pulling the knob in and we can put our poles back on. And you want the belt tight enough so it is not laying on the tabletop. There you have it. It's in locked in place, but now it's going to ride nice and straight from one end to the other. And you're gonna, it's going to give you a nice straight design. So now we can um, put the poles back on. Okay, so we have finished the quilt motion section setup. Um, for the belts and everything. So now we're ready to move to our Quilt Motion QCT wiring instructions. So you'll want to pull out this booklet next. Then we're going to open it up and turn to the first page. And we're going to find what machine we have. And we have the 21, and I've made little notes here for them to change things. That's what we do around here. Huh, Marie? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of little changes. So instead of just the 21, it's the 21 series. So we're going to turn to page 13. And so if you'll quickly turn to page 13 and give it a good glance before um, jumping in and starting you will have a better understanding of how things will work and go together, okay? So, um, on this page, you pull out all the parts that you need, and we're gonna attach our tablet bracket, and this is the mount, this is the tray, the bracket, and the knob to hold it so you can angle it, and you need four of these little screws, and I'm gonna show you. So right down here, we're gonna take this little plate off here on my machine, and attach this bracket here. I'm gonna take my little tiny Allen wrench, 
and take this little screw out. And I'm going to set that off to the side. So what we're going to do is we're attaching this bracket, which the tablet tray will be mounted to, and I'm just putting it on. It only really goes one direction. You can not you can put it on backwards, so, so don't. So make sure that this little rounded lump is towards the back of your machine, and then I just will finger tighten it, the screws down and then tighten them down totally. Because you don't want the vibration to make your tablet move all over. Yeah, away. and fall out or whatnot. So we want to tighten things down really good. All good. What we're going to do right now is I'm going to just loosen these screws and I want to make sure that I mount my tablet correctly. Sure. So now I can put this screw through this hole right here, making sure that this two little rests for your tablet are facing down. And I'm gonna grab my three wing knob and I'm just gonna tighten it down. And now I can grab my tablet and I'm going to put it on my tablet tray and then I can tighten up these. Now, as I'm tightening this up, on this side I want to attach my cord, my power cord. So I want to make sure that I'm pulling this up so that I can put my power cord on and tighten it down. So it, this isn't going to be in the way. You also have a screw to make the arm go up and down. This little piece right uh -huh. here. This, if I loosen this, and so, so that, that, can go that, up that or one down. will go, make it go up and down. And if I loosen that, see this little arm positioning up and down, so we want to make sure that I position it up and then tighten it down. And then I'm just going to make sure that I tighten these two screws down. So now my tablet's on nice and secure and it's not going to vibrate around. And now we're ready to start attaching our cords. Okay. Marie, which one would you start with first? Uh, it doesn't matter, but start, since you're working on the tablet, start, uh, do the Power? A to A. Okay, so, USB cable. okay, so this is the A to A. Uh -huh. And the reason it's called the A to A, because this side and this side are exactly the same. Yeah. And so one end of the, one of the ends will mount into your little, um, port right here on top of your machine and all of our community machines have these ports that work with the automation okay and then you're going to attach the other end make sure that you put it in correctly and uh, to your tablet so that's the A to A so we also have another USB and it's the A to B A to B and it's going to plug in right back here okay and you're going to plug this funky little different end into this port and what's the secret to it you got to push it in until it clicks there you go and you heard it click it was designed to do the click so it holds it while the machine's moving and doesn't vibrate out yeah and then this piece right here plugs into this back of the machine, this port, this USB port right back here. We're going to plug in this, this cord here, and this is my sewing cable. And this is what communicates with the automation to make your sewing machine sew. Yes. Any tips to tell us if it's working correctly or not, um, what it does when it's not communicating? The, the automation just uh, moves around and doesn't stitch, so yeah. it traces. Yeah, so if your automation is just moving Trace. and tracing. And no stitching. And no stitching, check this sewing cable. And the sewing cable has the two ends that look like um, telephone cables and like your encoders. This end will go into this port right here underneath. And you're just going to plug it in until you hear it click. And then you're going to plug the other end into where this blue port right here. We only have one more cord to go, and that's my power cord. And I'm just going to take my power cord from behind and just plug it in right here on the side. 
And the reason it's good to have your power cord in. You, so your tablet doesn't die away in the middle yeah. of quilting. <laughs> so really, if you're running on fumes, make sure that you plug your power cord in. You can see that I've already connected some little zip tie holders right here to hold this power cord. So I'm just going to take it. And then I'm, so now that I've attached it right here, I can attach it right here. And I wanna put it down through, that's easier for me. And then, just gonna put it up through, zip tight, and then just tighten it down. And now I'm just gonna put this excessive block right here underneath, and I can plug it into my power strip. So it can lay right under here in the carriage because there's enough space that as it moves back and forth, side to side, it's not going to hit into it. Okay, while we're right here, let's plug in our encoders. And the encoders plug into the green ports. And we're gonna plug the bottom one in here and my top one right here. So now you have all these ports plugged in. And now we can use my zip tie to tie these down. And we wanna be able to move our machine back as far as we can so we have enough cord. And we'll use our zip tie to tie that down. Is this about the correct position to put that zip tie or? I also like to move the machine forward okay. to, to see Just if Just to make I'm sure I have it. enough. Yeah, it, you have enough space. Good point. Okay, so now I can put this down in. And I should be able to tighten that up. And this will help keep the cables out of the way. Yeah, and you then don't we'll want just cut wheels. this piece off. You want to make sure that this piece doesn't hit in to anything. So we'll just cut that piece off. There we go. Okay, we'll plug in our power cord so it's all plugged in. <laughs> and uh, all of you happens. heard that sound. <laughs> if you hear that sound, the bob and winder was pushed on, and it's probably because I was leaning up over it and I hit its button. So, <laughs> so just know that if you hear that noise, check the bob and winder. You don't have to call us. <laughs> <laughs> Your machine's buzzing. Yeah, it's it's the bob and winder. Anyway, on. it's funny that happened because we get a lot of phone calls about this noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, hey, that's the completion, <laughs> and it wasn't that hard. I mean, really. No, it wasn't. It's, it's not. You can do it. You just need a little help with your machine, lifting it on and off the carriage, and everything else you can do yourself. So thanks for joining me. 